updated super clean up Carol because the old one um, doesn't reflect the new requirements which is Carol coming back down to the beginning sorry that wasn't reset um, so if you did do it my old if you watch my old video and then realize shoot it doesn't bring you back to the beginning hopefully the way I do this one you can easily just add in my go to finish I'm not sure um, I can't remember exactly how I did that one um, so there may be a chance you have to finagle some code around um, but hopefully we'll be able to make it work so I'm gonna write a couple of the the methods we're gonna have to write so the first method that I'm going to write would be to clean the row. The next method I'm going to write is to go up the row. And then the last method I'm going to write is when Carol's up at the top and she needs to go to the finish. Um, that'll be the last one. So I'm going to write clean row. Up row. And then go to finish. All right, so my clean row okay. is going to be, now I'm first going to check if there's a ball present. Um, you know what, and I for, forgot my while loop. Actually, I'm gonna put my while loop out here. It is late here on the East Coast where I'm typing. So my skills may not be as crisp as if it were in the morning. I'm not going to have the go to finish in there because I'm only going to want the go to finish to run one time. I'm going to delete these guys. Computer's so slow. Okay. Must have been thinking of Game of Thrones. GOT. All right. Sorry. If ball's present, we're going to take the ball. After that, we're going to move. Now, because I'm um, cow checking while the front is clear, once the dog gets here, the front's not clear anymore. So this if statement's not going to be checked. You know what? Um, I do need a while loop here too. because I don't want her to do the clean row one time and then go up the row right after these two lines of code run. So I need to make sure that this gets run the whole time. Okay, so now I'm gonna comment the, this out. I, want, I just want you to see what happens when I run this. Okay, so here, the front's no longer clear. So what happens is this while loop stops running, so this if statement does not get checked right here because she's moving after she checks for the ball. So she's not checking for the ball here. So we're just gonna have to check for the ball after she moves, she, he. Um, that way, the whole row gets cleared. All right, so now that's good. We're gonna write another method for the up row. And we're specifically going to be checking if Carol is facing east or west. So when she's facing east, as she is right now, we're going to have to turn left then we are going to move and then we want to clean I'm, I'm doing mine 
back and forth like this. That is not the only right, right way. You could, some people do it going up and down. Um, there's multiple ways to do this. This is just the way I chose to do it. So there's really no one right way. There might be one way that's um, more efficient or, you know, has the least amount of code, but for now, if it works, it works. Okay, so let's check if this runs. If I get rid of that, let's just see if it goes up the row. Okay, perfect. Now, I can't just write if facing west because what happens is after this code runs and she's up here, she is facing west. So I don't want her to go up another row until after. So what you do is you use an else. Now they didn't teach you this in any of the videos so far. So um, what you would do if you hadn't watched the video was do an else and then an if inside. Because I already checked and it works, we're just gonna do an else if. Now an else if is just saying, okay, if this doesn't work, then come down here. But if this does work, do not run the else if. So that's all. It's, it's the same thing as writing an else and then an if inside. It's just a little bit less brackets and a little bit less, you know, writing. So else if, so you have to write a condition with else if. We're going to write facing west. And it's going to be the opposite, right? We're going to turn right first. Then move. Then turn right again. All right, and let's see if this works. Okay, perfect. Now, what happens is Carol crashed because she was facing west and tried to move right here. So, what we need to say is if the front is clear, we're going to do that. Same thing obviously would happen here. So we also need to add an if the front is clear because on other rows with a different number of, um, in other, sorry, worlds with a different number of rows, she may be facing east. So we need to make sure. You'll notice I keep like putting a bracket and then deleting it. In certain, pro, certain, like in Coding Bat, I always put the bracket here. In Code HS, they like the bracket on separate lines. I think it's for, you know, when you're learning how to code for the first time, it's easier to see the brackets when they're on their own line. But a lot of professional programmers actually write the bracket here. Both are correct. Um, it just will give me like those errors, not errors, but it, it flags it and it doesn't like it. So, all right, this world's still not going to work though, because I have to bring Carol back down here, but hopefully it stops her from crashing. Yeah. It'll just say, I don't know what's hidden behind there, but I'm sure it's saying Carol's not finished. You know, didn't, it didn't end up where she's supposed to. So let's write our go to finish. So, in both cases, whether she was facing east or west, she's going to be facing north at this point. So, I'm going to have her turn around. Oh, man. And then, I wish I wrote. I probably did it in my other video. Well, I guess I could just call the clean row. I mean, there's no balls, but it's moving her the whole time. So let's just, let me just make sure there's nothing in there. She doesn't turn at all. So let's just write clean row. So 
she's facing here and she cleans the row. That basically just means she's checking for balls, she moves, she ends up stopping here because the front's not clear, and then I'm going to have her turn left. And let's see if this world, it works. Uh, oh my gosh, I wrote Game of Thrones again. Sorry, I wish this was faster. Perfect. Now, what if she was over here when she ended up at the top and she came down here? She's now facing east and she's blocked. So what I'm going to do is check if the front is blocked. I know she's not in the right place. So we are going to turn around. And then I'm going to write clean row just because I'm being lazy. She's not really cleaning the row because it's already clean, but she's moving. And then clean row works until the front's not clear anymore, right? So she'll end up here, and then I'll just have her turn around again. If I can spell. So let me see if I can find a world where that might happen. Yeah, this one. Let's run this one. There you go. So if I slowed it down, you would see her come down here, turn and face to the east, realize that it's blocked, and that she still needs to run that code right there. So there's still one world. It doesn't like, uh, I'm not going to worry about the comments or the indentation. Um, but or maybe I will. The world four, you guys might remember, is that world that is just a single column. So what I do is I'm going to put all of this in an if statement. And this is going to be while if the front is clear. Sorry, my internet's, I pay for the fastest internet and it is really slow today. And then while the front is clear, just got to fix some of these brackets. No, that one doesn't like, that's why. Okay. And then, um, we need to go to finish, I think, for both of them. Else, we're going to turn left, clean row, and then I think the go to finish should work for this one. So let's let's run it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's it. Um, yeah, it doesn't like some of my brackets that I accidentally kept messing around with. Um, but other than that, you can write comments like this. You can, you know, say this brings Carol to the finish. And you always try and make your methods be exactly what it's supposed to do. You know, so I wouldn't call this like, I, I don't know, just a random word. I would call it what it's supposed to be for that function. So just try and make your functions as descriptive as possible so that your comments don't have to be all that much. Uh, if you write your code as, as good as you write like an English paper, it should make sense. Now, comments are helpful, especially when there's you know thousands and thousands of lines of code. But if you write good code, then it makes it much easier for someone coming in to read it behind you. 
Um, you have to assume that if you are a programmer in an industry, you may not always hold that position. Somebody is going to always have to come in behind you and read it, um, whether it be a colleague who's trying to help you or just sometimes companies get bought out and you get fired or laid off and you know you you want to help that next programmer as much as possible even though you might be better in that situation but comments are important they seem a little redundant when it's you know not that much lines of code and they're pretty self-explanatory but it's just a good habit to get into so um, that is it if you have any other questions about this video um, can let me know but hopefully you're able to fix whatever I messed up in that last one. <laughs>